I'm Bo HD from PhoneDog.com and I've used the iPhone 7 Plus for nearly two months now as my daily driver and these are my thoughts on Apple's latest smartphone. When you hear the word iPhone, you know exactly what to expect. It's an iconic device that has received a fresh coat of paint each year but has fundamentally stayed the same. And that's not a bad thing. You still have access to millions of applications, over two million that appear as big, bold, round squares on your home screens. It honestly wouldn't be an iPhone without those round square app icons that we've all kind of come to expect, come to love. Now, whether it be for personal use or for our top 10 iOS apps videos, I have loaded this device up with all kinds of apps over the days, weeks, and months, and it doesn't break a sweat running any of them. The 7 and 7 Plus featured the A10 Fusion chip with an embedded M10 Motion coprocessor that might not mean a whole lot to you on paper, but you can take my word for it when I say this phone is fast. It's actually one of the fastest smartphones in the world, despite it only having, you know, three gigabytes of RAM when many flagship Android smartphones have four or even six gigabytes of RAM. While iOS 10 has tweaked some of the design elements here and there and has added a plethora of new features, the iPhone 7 Plus works like any other iPhone to come before it. It's just a little bit faster and, you know, I would say a little bit more reliable, but there are still plenty of bugs here and there that still need to be worked out in future builds. For the benchmark enthusiasts out there, Geekbench 3 gives the iPhone 7 Plus a single core score of around 3,500 and a multi-core score of nearly 5,600. So as for that fresh coat of paint, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus can now be purchased in black or jet black. So the comment of a fresh coat of paint can be taken quite literally, especially as the design is nearly identical to the last gen iPhone. There is, however, no headphone jack present on the phone. You will need an adapter. And I thought this wouldn't be a big deal as most of my headphones are wireless, but I've been in several situations where I haven't had my adapter and have wanted to play music via a wired connection. And it has absolutely sucked. It's been really lame and I've been laughed at by my friends. Thanks, Apple. With that said, the speakers are much better than the iPhone 6S or 6S Plus or 6 or 6 Plus. There's a front facing speaker that doubles as the call speaker and of course a bottom facing speaker which is a little bit louder than the front facing speaker but overall, two stereo speakers make content much more enjoyable to consume. The other big hardware change is with the camera or should I say cameras as there is a 12 megapixel f1.8 aperture wide angle sensor and a f2.8 telephoto sensor with optical zoom at 2x, digital zoom at 10x. This is one of the first mainstream smartphones to feature an optical zoom and it's an absolute joy to use, honestly. I've loved this feature. With the two camera sensors in iOS 10.1 which features a portrait mode that blurs the background of a subject to create an ultra milky depth of field shot with plenty of bokeh, well, it results in some excellent looking photos. Photos appear very natural in color. Uh, they kind of appear a little bit more muted than other smartphone sensors like the Galaxy S7. But if you want an extra vivid, vibrant photo, you can always crank up the saturation and contrast in post-production. I will say the wide angle sensor can capture excellent low light photos thanks to the f1.8 aperture. Uh, the built in optical image stabilization can also help create for blur free photos and shake free videos for the most part. Uh, the camera may be the biggest reason to upgrade to the iPhone 7 Plus. Though the battery life and screen are close behind, I was a bit disappointed to hear that Apple decided to only upgrade the brightness and color gamut of their uh, displays this time around. The resolution of the 7 Plus is still 1920 by 1080 stretched to a 5.5 inch Retina HD display and the display type is still LCD. This might be the last iPhone to feature an LCD panel. Now the panel itself doesn't impress me like a Samsung panel does but I can't really complain about it too much as it performs pretty well outside, it has great viewing angles and is very color accurate. I just wish it had the deep blacks and extra saturated and contrasted colors that AMOLED panels tend to produce. The AMOLED panel would also help conserve some battery life, though the 2900mAh battery is really, really great. It's wonderful. It might actually be the feature why I personally have preferred to use this phone over any other as my daily driver, as I use my phone a lot, more than I probably should, and I don't like to worry about the battery life lasting me throughout the day. There are many other things to worry about in life. Battery life should not be one of them. I can get around seven hours of screen on time and 16 hours of standby time, give or take. That's really tough to compete against with all things considered. 
There are some quote unquote little things that have been added or tweaked with the 7 and 7 Plus. Uh, some may not be so little. For example, IP67 water resistance keeps this phone in functioning order even when completely submerged underwater. That's right, you can run this phone through a sink to clean it off and it will be completely fine. If it falls out of your pocket and into your toilet, it will be completely fine, but probably it will need a, a cleaning, a deep cleaning. I will say it hasn't been easy for me to willingly pour water on my iPhone, likely because of water and technology. They don't really mix very well, but it can take a splash and be totally fine. The cake is a lie. I mean, the home button is a lie. It doesn't actually move even though it feels like it does. Apple added a vibration motor to simulate a press similar to the MacBook Force Touch trackpads. That way the button can be sealed shut from water. Now, I didn't like this new home button upon first impressions, but after I started using it more, I actually learned to really enjoy it as I found it much easier to quickly double or triple press than the old home button. The old home button now feels very mushy. Touch ID is still built into the home button and it works to unlock the phone lightning fast. Force Touch is also still found in the 7 and 7 Plus and it's been improved as developers have worked to add the functionality into their apps. I don't use Force Touch too often on my iPhone. I think the uh, biggest use of it is actually just opening up like a private browser tab or something right from the home screen. Oh, and moving the cursor around when I'm typing. That is a huge feature. But overall, the iPhone 7 Plus makes for a great daily driver smartphone. The battery life and camera performance are probably the strongest areas of this smartphone, but the other areas that may be beat out by other smartphones are still adequate and they help round out the smartphone to make it a daily driver smartphone. It makes it daily driver material. As for whether or not this phone is worth upgrading to from your current smartphone, well, that's going to depend upon your financial situation and current smartphone. I will say that you should enjoy using this phone as a daily driver. If you're open to iOS and you don't find yourself customizing your device to the degree that Android allows for. I would also recommend you only consider upgrading if you have a device that is more than two years old. If you own an iPhone 6 or 6S Plus, I would probably save your money unless you are really hankering for an upgrade. Also, if you consume a lot of media and you find yourself transferring files between your iPhone and your computer frequently, I'd recommend you go with the 256 gigabyte iPhone as it features faster uh, flash storage than the smaller capacity variants. The difference in speed is very minor, but I'm gonna place a link to a video that explains the differences uh, in, in detail down below in the description. So go check that out. Uh, there's also been some reports of a, uh, a hissing noise when the phone is under some intense stress, like when it plays games, runs graphic intensive applications. I haven't found the hissing noise to bother me personally, but if you're sensitive uh, to hearing or something, I guess that's something to consider as well before buying an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. I also have a few different iPhone 7 Plus cases here that I'll link in the description along with a few iPhone 7 cases. Uh, this is the VRS Design Crystal Mix case. It's crystal clear so you can peek in and, and view your jet black or, or just simply black iPhone 7 Plus. It features a hard plastic design but with some flex to help it fasten onto your device. There's also a kickstand here as well. For the phone dog ladies out there or those who like bros gold, we have the Vesco Rose Gold case that features a tough rubber shell that will protect all four corners and sides of your device. There are cutouts for the camera and Apple logo. This is overall a great case to go with if you want drop protection. The other case I have here is also from VRS Design. It's called the Simply Fit case. It's all black and while it adds protection to your iPhone 7 Plus, it does so without adding too much extra bulk. Fun fact, this is my daily driver case that I always have on my iPhone 7 Plus when it's not being featured in a video. So links to all these cases will be in the description. Those are my thoughts on the iPhone 7 Plus after using the phone for nearly two months as a daily driver. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and would absolutely love to see your face in the comment section uh, in this video as well as in our next video. So don't forget to subscribe. As always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.